Welcome to our daily devotion. The Methodist Church of Barbados invites you to sing, pray, and worship with us as we declare God's glory and celebrate His mighty acts. Day is done, gone the sun from the hills, from the sea, from the sky. All is well, safely rest, God is nigh. Heavenly Father, the hustle of the day has ended. We come now to rest, being ever thankful that you have given us several gifts. The gifts of your Son, your grace, and mercy. So that even if within this day we did not do what you willed us to do, there is still the chance of a new beginning because of your unfailing love for us. Let us now quiet the many thoughts and reflections on the day or the year that has passed because you are here with us. God is nigh. We acknowledge your unsurpassed greatness. Lord, we gaze into the night sky and we see the vastness of the universe and stand in awe of your greatness and goodness. We confess, Lord, that even with our best efforts, we have not done all that we should have done today. 
We entertain thoughts we should not have had, sometimes letting negativity overwhelm us rather than leaning solely on you. We have said and done things that either knowingly or unknowingly may have hurt others and we ask your forgiveness. As we embrace your presence, Lord, we are grateful for many things. The trials that make us stronger and teach us to rely on you. We did have some successes today and we give you the thanks, the praise and the glory, knowing full well that we can accomplish nothing without you. We bring before you the efforts of our government in the fight against COVID-19 and the many frontline workers who have been working tirelessly to help those affected by this virus. We pray that they will seek your guidance and that you will protect them as they selflessly perform their duties. Most of all, Lord, we are grateful for the hope you have provided through your Son, Jesus Christ. We are confident that through our faith in him, our challenges will pass and we will be conquerors as has been promised. The sun may be gone from the sky, but we know that we can find rest and peace in the comfort of your arms with the assurance that the gift of the Holy Spirit will be with us as a guide through the coming day. We therefore release all of our cares to you knowing that you will comfort and protect us as we rest in your peace. Amen.
A pleasant good evening to all. Reflect with me on the text recorded in Luke 10, 38-42, the story of Mary and Martha. Getting our priorities right. Now as they went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks, so she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need for only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. The Gospel of Christ. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O Lord God, for the opportunity to worship you in this virtual hallowed space. Bless your servant as she speaks. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, for you are our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. The passage relates the story of two sisters. Mary and Martha were close friends and followers of Jesus. Together with their brother Lazarus, they hosted Jesus in their home on more than one occasion. Yet, on one such visit from Jesus, they chose two very different actions. And the way that Jesus reacted to their choices is a very valuable lesson for us today. 
we can ask ourselves a few questions. Am I a Mary or a Martha when it comes to my relationship with Jesus? Am I guilty of allowing myself to become so busy in their daily routine of life that listening to Jesus becomes secondary? Is it really possible for me to be a Mary in Martha's world? In the story, Martha is worried about her sister. Martha was rushing around serving and doing her best to get everything prepared to honor their beloved and special guest. And where was Mary when Martha needed a hand? She chose to sit at Jesus' feet, listening as he spoke. It's pretty easy to imagine how Martha might have been feeling, probably irritated, frustrated, or resentful. Why should she be doing all the work? Was it right for Mary not to be helping out? In fact, Martha felt so justified in her resentment that she went and talked to Jesus about it. Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her to help me. But instead of Jesus giving Martha the support that she needed, Jesus rebuked her. Martha, Martha, you're worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed. Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. This must have left, felt like a slap in Martha's face. Here she was, doing everything in her power to be hospitable and make things look good. And Mary just sat there. And yet, what she was doing was the right thing. Note, however, that in spite of this story being heard so often, I am not convinced that the ways of Mary and Martha are necessarily either good or bad, all of us at some time have to be doers as Martha was. It's the worried and distracted part we must learn to let go and not be too quick to criticize and judge others for doing what they prefer to do instead. And oftentimes the quiet, silent practice displayed by Mary leads to action. Sitting in the presence of God and the Holy Spirit gives us clarity and direction to what we are to do next. Mary was listening. She was at a place of submission, a place of peace, a place of devotion. Mary's example is one of Christian learning, an example of Christian worship and Christian devotion. On the other hand, Martha is laboring, cumbered with much serving. My friends, let's beware of the barrenness of busyness. We become very busy in our daily routine that we fail to achieve anything meaningful at the end of the day. Still, the fact is, as guests, Jesus and his disciples had to be fed. But we see from observing Martha that work without worship is dead. This caused Martha to be upset, to talk instead of listen. It caused her to be critical of her sister and caused her to feel discouraged. Jesus said to Martha, Thou art troubled inside. What's the lesson here? It is that Christ looks within us and sees our troubled heart and pain. Christ knows all about our cares. He has told us in his world to cast all our burdens upon him, for he cares for us. 1 Peter 5, 7 Martha learned a valuable lesson that day. She learned that worship is most important to God. And must take priority. She learned that labor must be balanced by listening to Jesus. It can become so easy for us to get wrapped up in all the things we think we need to do and the things that we think we need to accomplish that we lose sight of what's more important, our relationship with Christ. This point is further borne out in the parable of the sower. About the seeds that fell among thorns, Jesus said, it is refers to to he who hears the word, and then the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becomes unfruitful. Therefore, when we allow the attractions of the world to distract us, we not only lose sight of God and the things of God, but we often send mixed messages to others who are watching on and looking to us for guidance. The scenario of Mary and Martha reminds me of a story I heard some time ago of Satan calling a worldwide convention with its demons and devising a plan to distract believers 
from forming an intimate relationship with God. Here are the devil's plans. We need to keep persons busy, involved in the non-essentials of life. Tempt them to spend money on items that would cater to their fancy lifestyles and materialistic pleasures. We need to, in, to overstimulate their minds so that they cannot hear that still, small voice of God nudging them to draw closer to Him. We must entice them to play and spend long hours on technological gadgets, on the cell phones and tablets, Facebook, WhatsApp and Twitter, not listening to online services, nightly devotions, praying and praising God. Get them addicted to these gadgets so that wherever they go, even to the bathroom, breakfast, lunch, dinner, or driving or even sleeping, they have them attached to their hips. Get books and literature in schools about homosexuality, gender issues, smoking drugs, and subject matter that is sure to cause confusion. Make the material so attractive that when they meet for spiritual worship, they would gossip and talk about the happenings in the world and leave the meetings with troubled consciences. Not understanding any more about what is right or wrong or where the lines of demarcation are drawn. My friends, the devil's plan was ingenious. A plan to get everybody, all of us so busy and immersed in worldly affairs that there would be little time for being involved in wholesome activities that will keep us grounded and firm in the faith. And of course, have no time to tell others about the power of Jesus to change lives. Are any of us caught in the trap or can identify ourselves as falling into any of the scenarios outlined? You'll be the judge. Does the word busy, B-U-S-Y, for some of us mean being under Satan's yoke? The question to all of us this evening is, has the devil been successful with his schemes or are we discerning enough to, to see through Satan's wicked schemes and find time, like Mary did, to be in God's presence and seek to align ourselves with God's plan for our lives? We are challenged to give God and the things of God the highest priority in our lives. We should, like Mary, choose the good part. Choose to learn of Jesus so that we can become like him. It's our love and devotion to God that makes everything else secondary. May the choice to seek, make the choice to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things will be added. Matthew 6, 33. In James 1, 22, we are reminded to be doers of the word and not hearers only. But what we do have to be led by the Spirit, whose voice we learn to hear by choosing the good part. We ask God for that spirit of discernment. John 20, 10, 27 says, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Mary understood that she needed to learn more of her master and to seek the things that have eternal value, not the things that are temporal and fleeting. 2 Corinthians 4.18 When we do this, we are blessed and can, in turn, become a blessing to others. In 1 Timothy 4.16, Paul writes, Take heed to yourselves and to the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this, you will save both yourself and those who hear you. In other words, choose what we know is right in the sight of God and get our priorities right. The mistake or poor choice that Martha made wasn't in serving and doing good. It was that in her work, she had made demands and was critical of Mary, rather than doing what was most important at the time, listening to Jesus. The challenge to all of us is to rise above all the noise and pursuits of this world and seek those things which have eternal value. It is still possible for us to be in the world and not of the world. I can assure you that when we become immersed in God and the things of God, then the words of this little chorus we sing, that things of the world grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace, have new meaning for us. Can you and I be a Mary in a Martha's world? Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father God, we acknowledge your supreme governance of our lives. You have created us with a purpose and plan, 
And we know that in order for us to fulfill our divine purpose, we must live in obedience to your word. Help us to live a life of balance before our priorities in the right place and our hearts focused on you. Help us to focus on the things that are most important. Keep us from being distracted by the things of this world which steal our time and attention. Most of all, dear Heavenly Father, remind us daily that you have called us to be fruitful, not just busy. We give you thanks for your constant presence in our lives and the promptings of the Holy Spirit to guide us aright. Hear this, my prayer, I humbly beseech thee. Amen and Amen. Brothers and sisters, go out into the world to serve God with love. Be ready to laugh with delight at the good news God has to offer you. Make room at your table for unexpected guests. When the work of discipleship leaves you weary or frustrated, rest in God's presence and listen to what he's saying. And the blessing of God, Creator, Christ and Holy Spirit, go with you today. And always, and the people of God say, Amen. Oh soul, are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. There's light for a look at the Savior, and life for Abundant and free. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow.
strangely salvation to tell. Oh, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strange. for being a part of our daily devotion. We trust it has been a blessing to you. Now together, let us hold fast to his word and may it dwell in all of us richly.